All right. Hey, we are going to start our uh, our next ID species and probably my favorite one, and that would be birds of prey in Minnesota. All right. Um, there's a ton of birds of prey. These are these are birds that you see quite a handful of them. You see quite a bit throughout the um, throughout the year. So we're going to go through those and how to identify them. Um, before that, if you are inter interested at all in birds, I think this is the most useful cool at your disposal. And this is the Autobahn bird guide. It's an app. It's free. Um, and it just has a ton of different information on how to identify different birds, um, et cetera, there with that. All right. So let's dive in to um, starting off with the falcon family. All right. So falcons that we see in Minnesota, um, falcons in general, they are hunters of birds. Okay. So they are, their prey are smaller birds than themselves. And they fly similar to a missile. They're going to be the fastest birds that we have. In fact, the fastest organisms that we have on Earth. Um, and they're very loud as they as they fly. So they're going to strike down from great heights above and smash into whatever bird they're trying to hunt. Um, its outline is very streamlined. Okay, you'll see those wings tucked back when they're diving out to the side. It is built for speed. The first one the most common one, or not sorry, the most common one, the most famous one is going to be the peregrine falcon. Okay, so the peregrine falcon, it has this executioner's hood, kind of this this look, these, this droop down, um, gray slate color coming down on its face. Um, there are some breeding pairs found throughout the state, including uh, some in the skyscrapers of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, they have this on the side of their beak. I don't know if you can see it now, maybe that one. No. Okay. They have this little notch in the side of their beak. Um, eh, a little bit. Okay. Um, and it's called a to um a tomial tooth found on there. So the beak is smooth, but it's got this little notch, and it's perfect for um breaking vertebrae. So it'll use that, it'll hook into the back of a their prey's neck vertebrae and then break their neck with that thing. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty intimidating. Um, their natural habitat is they like to live on cliff faces. Um, and so they fit in one of the few species that actually fits in quite well in urban environments because that is a um, very similar to a cliff and they are medium in size. Here's a look at this thing flying. I should point out this is the fastest organism on earth. Okay, it's reached speeds of over 200 miles an hour in, in free fall there and diving there. So there's a look at it. Um, there's a cool video on um, watching it there. But we'll move on to falcon number two, and that is the merlin. All right, this thing's going to be smaller than the than the peregrine. It is about ten inches to fourteen inches tall, so it's not like I said, not very big. Um, I always remember this one because it looks like it's wearing kind of these red pants. Okay, so it's got this kind of red orange chest, and then these red pants that go with that. I don't know why that's that's always stuck out, but it has as that is how to identify the merlin. Uh, and it's going to hunt in semi-open terrains. Okay, it's going to prefer to live on the edges of um, the forest and prairies, et cetera, there. Number uh, three, we're not going to have this on the test. Okay, um, it's a cool bird. Um, it's not really present in Minnesota. You know, they, they're up in Canada. And in the winter months, when it gets real cold in Canada, they'll dip down into Minnesota to um, um, live. It's the jeer falcon. Um, it's the largest falcon on earth. All right. That's why it's kind of cool. And it's got that, that sweet kind of white look to it there, but we're going to skip that. Number three will be on the test. That is the prairie falcon. All right. The prairie falcon is very similar to the peregrine. Only difference would be it, it prefers the prairie um, hunting versus the bluffs and cliffs. Um, it's got dark armpits. If you look at it flying, that's what I mean by dark armpits. Kind of the underneath of the wing is very, very dark. Um, it also has, um, oops, it also has this mustache looking thing coming off of its beak, that coloration. It's just different colored from feathers, but I call it a mustache because your um, looks kind of like a mustache, helps us identify it. It's roughly the same size as the peregrine, um, and it's only found in western Minnesota in there. So there's a look at that thing. It's again very light colored in there. And then four, the smallest falcon in the world, the kestrel. I guarantee you've seen these before, maybe didn't even notice they'd be sitting on um telephone wires and, and fence posts etc it is the smallest falcon in the world all right so it's only about 10 inches tall it's got a two foot wingspan that's got these two um, vertical stripes running down its face 
and it has this rust colored back and tail. Uh, and it is going to be an insect hunter. And as its primary prey is going for, for various insects there with the American kestrel. Okay, moving on to the Budios. These will be the hawks. All right, so we're the next family up. Um, the hawks are going to fly more like fighter jets, if you want to think of them like that. Um, they're still very fast, um, not as fast as, as falcons, but they're going to rely a little bit more on their maneuverability versus just sheer speed coming in and smashing into something there. So the first one, the most common one, um, it's it's big bird. All right, it's, it can be up to two feet tall. It has a red tail. Uh, it's very common in southeast Minnesota. That'd be the red tail hawk. All right, so he's identified has this reddish brown tail to it. Um, and like I said, it's a red tail hawk. It's a, uh, got a distinctive call. Look it up, check out that app. Uh, they actually use the red tail hawk calls as eagle eagle calls in um, in movies. Um, eagles actually don't make that high pitched kind of that um, soaring kind of sound, um, booming sound. That's uh, a red tail hawk that makes that sound that they use. So there's a look at that red tail. Easy way to see how it got its name in there. Next up, one of my favorites is the osprey. All right, the osprey is the fish hawk. Is another name for the osprey. You're gonna see these in northern Minnesota mainly, but you also see them along the entire Mississippi River um, Valley. Uh, I, I've seen them in southern Minnesota as well. Uh, they have these distinct black bands on the sides of their face with a yellow eye inside there. Uh, they have a very very white underbelly, uh, and it's they're big. Okay, they're big. They're four to six foot large uh, wingspan. And you're going to see these around bodies of water. Fish are their main prey. Okay, so they're excellent fishermen. Uh, if you look at there, there's one pulling up some kind of, I don't know what that is, some kind of trout, some kind of fish that that one's got there. So six is the osprey. Seven, the goshawk. Um, these are very nimble flyers. So they're actually one of the few species that will fly through thick woodlands. Um, most birds will fly, like, fly like underneath the canopy, above the canopy. These will actually go through because they're very, very nimble as they're going through. Um, they have these reddish orange eyes and these horizontal stripes across their chest. They're found in mixed woodlands and coniferous forest, and they're um, rare to the, our portion of Minnesota, but you'll go a little further north, you're going to see them in there. That's the goshawk. Number eight, the broadwing hawk. Um, they have are known for having two white and two black bands on their tail. If you look at it, here's their tail, two black bands, two white bands on their tail. Um, they're also a woodland hunter. Um, there are huge uh, groups of these called kettles that you can find near Duluth every year that are concentrated up there. So there's the broad-winged hawk there. Look for that tail. All right, number nine, the ferruginous hawk. All right. Ferruginous hawk is going to be known for its um, rust-colored back. Okay, so if you look at this thing, it's got a rusty-looking back. Um, hence the, the prefix from pharaoh in there for, for iron. It is seen in the western parts of the state and more commonly found kind of west of the uh, Minnesota. So in the Dakotas, Wyoming, Montana, et cetera, in there for the ferruginous hawk. White belly, rust-colored back. Um, Good-sized bird still. Number 10 and number, I'm sorry, number 10 is the sharp shinned hawk. Um, it's a little guy. It's 10 to 14 inches tall. It has kind of that slate colored back and it's got these really skinny legs. Okay. Really these, these like pencil thickness legs in there. Um, they have some orange and then white striping and then their, their tail makes a very square tip. So if you look at their tail, you see how it's got that very um, squared off edge to it and these tiny little skinny shins in there. Um, and it's going to hunt very small um, mammals in there. Okay, number 11. Everyone's familiar with number 11. Number 11 is the bald eagle. It is one of the largest birds on the planet. It has a very long beak. If you look at it from the side, its beak extends quite long down its face. Um, it has up to a seven-foot wingspan. And standing can be about three feet tall, just standing. Um, it's going to eat a variety of things, okay? It's primarily going to eat fish. It'll also go after carrion, which is dead animals. You'll see it on eating roadkill. Um, and then they also hunt waterfowl, so different ducks. When these things fly, they tend to fly with their wings locked straight out. 
So it's almost like a, a large plank, like a, like a, um, a bomber when they fly. They're just, they're kind of so soaring birds as they're going. They have these large um, plank-like wings as they're going. They're common along the Mississippi now, thanks to conservation efforts. And the National Eagle Center is just south of the Twin Cities in Wabashaw, Minnesota. Here's a look at some eagles. Um, the one on the right is still a bald eagle, believe it or not. It's just a juvenile or a young, young bald eagle. Okay, it takes them a couple of years before they get those, those characteristic bald eagle colorings on, on them. And then I think the last one we're gonna do today, because this video is starting to get a little long, we'll cut it, we'll cut it in, uh, we'll, we'll save the owls for the, another day. And that is the turkey vulture. All right, turkey vulture is gonna be um you see it in the air, it can be kind of commonly confused with the eagle. One thing to note, the eagle flies with its arms straight out. Turkey vultures fly with their arms kind of uh, tucked up in a kind of V-shaped pattern. Um, it has a very distinct featherless head that we're going to see a close-up of. Um, they're a little smaller than um, bald eagles. Um, the reason they don't have feathers on their head is that these things are going to eat dead stuff. All right, So they're going to eat dead stuff, and they don't want as all that dead um, flesh and tissue get stuck in their, in their feathers. And so having a bald head helps prevent that problem. And they're one of the few birds with a good sense of smell. All right, they're going to eat dead things. And so having a good sense of smell is going to be helpful. Um, most birds do not. Most birds are focused on having a, um, on, the, on their vision as a result there. So here's a, a close-up look at the turkey vulture. So that was, I think, 12 or 11 or something like that, Minnesota Birds of Prey. We'll conclude our part one of um, that species group.